marriage feast is. What is this marriage feast? And who is the king? And who is the son? The fathers of the church, St. Gregory and St. Ambrose and St. Augustine say, God the Father prepared the marriage. The marriage is of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. He married his bride. And who is his bride? It's the Catholic Church. And who is the Catholic Church? It is all those who believe all that Christ taught. And that's the beauty of the Catholic faith, is that we don't make up the Catholic faith. We simply believe, like children, their father who, cannot, who doesn't lie. The Heavenly Father cannot lie. He is truth himself. So we believe all the truths of the Catholic faith. And then those wash in the precious blood of our Lord, because we're all... We're all slaves of sin. We're born slaves of sin. Baptism breaks those chains, frees us from the devil's grip. And then should any of us trip and fall into sin, venial or mortal, mortal brings death to the soul and eternal damnation is the reward, is the punishment for mortal sin. So all those who've been washed in Christ's blood and truly repentant, they make up the living members of the what's called the Catholic Church. And when we speak of the Catholic Church, of course, we mean not the conciliar church, the new fabricated church, built with the help of devils, with new doctrine and the and new watered-down sacraments. This is the conciliar church of Vatican II. And the Archbishop said, we refuse this church. Archbishop Lefebvre said, we have nothing to do with the conciliar church. It's a fabricated man's invention. But we stay Catholic. We want to stay Catholic. And by being Catholic, we firstly must hold the faith, the faith that came from Christ, from the apostles, from the truth, from all the councils of the Catholic Church of tradition. That's what makes us Catholic. Firstly, believing. Secondly, loving God. And but we love God by keeping His commandments and living in the state of grace. And our Lord knows we're weak, so he left his, his great and magnificent, beautiful sacrament of confession, which heals the soul and brings it back to life, should it fall from God's grace. So, that's his bride. And at the end of the world will be the great marriage between Christ and his bride, the, the church triumphant. All those who go to heaven will be mystically married to Christ, that is, by the beatific vision in the happiness of heaven, on the new earth and the new heaven. So, our Lord Jesus Christ invites, he firstly invites the Jews. But the Jews, most of them didn't want to hear it. And then he sends the apostles out, go and bring the Gentiles in. This is how the fathers explain it. The Gentiles are all the non-Jews. Bring them in, compel them to come in. And that is all, all nations to come into the Holy Roman Catholic Church. And the city that's destroyed, of course, was the city of Jerusalem, destroyed in the year 70, as our Lord foretold, for their deicide, for putting to death the living and true God. And then uh, the wedding feast. The wedding feast on earth is the Catholic Church. And the, the guy that comes into the wedding dressed in cut up blue jeans and a cut up t-shirt and uh, messed up hair, this guy is kicked out. Why? Because he symbolizes and represents a soul in mortal sin. And none of us can enter heaven except by the state of grace. And the state of grace means that God, the Blessed Trinity, lives in your soul. He lives in your soul and transforms your whole being. And all your actions become precious in God's eyes. And that's why the Virgin Mary of Fatima, she begged us. She told the children, uh, offer prayers and penances, sacrifices to save souls from hell. And we know this, that all you do out of love for God in the state of grace really goes to snatch souls from hell. That's the power of the mystical body, power of prayer and penance. So if you do this, 
as St. Teresa, the child Jesus, said, there will be many in heaven that will come to thank you, Chinese, Russians, who are in heaven because of some sacrifice, some prayer you offered, some, some cross you carried out of patience and love for God. Now, the history of the Catholic Church is very similar. In the Catholic Church you have all the words of Christ, all the words of the councils of the Catholic Church up till Vatican I. Vatican I was not infallible. Vatican I, excuse me, Vatican II is not infallible. Vatican II was straight out of hell. Vatican II is, is full of heresies, and the heresies, as Archbishop Lefebvre said, even though not every document was heretical, the heretical poison perm permeates throughout the whole council, throughout the whole spirit of the council. And Vatican II, as you know, was the council held in 1962-65, when you could say the enemies of Jesus Christ especially prominently the Freemasons and the Judeo-Masons, they said 150 years ago, we will so infiltrate the Catholic Church that we will tear her down and extinguish her. We will raise her to the ground and the Masonic ideas of false religious liberty, ecumenism, the idea that all religions are the same and all lead to heaven, Collegiality, which is democracy within the church, removing the Pope as monarch. That's why Pope Paul VI gave away the crown of the Pope to the Benai Barith, the Freemasons in New York City. He gave away the monarchy of the papacy. And these are serious attacks at the very foundation of the, of the church our Lord Jesus Christ founded. So that has always been the goal of the Freemasons, and they said it themselves, we will so prevail that our, idea, our ideas will spread over the dome of St. Peter's. And now, this past week, they're laughing, they're toasting with their wine and cheese, they think they're going to raise the Catholic Church to the ground. And we have a Pope who have just, just approved this horrible synod, a scandal to the whole world, Something unbelievable that the Catholic Church, the men of the Church, would betray our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter the Pope would betray his Lord again. And all the bishops cowardly betraying our Lord again. This is our time. And these enemies of Christ are laughing and they think they're going to prevail and triumph. And in this synod it allows giving Holy Communion sacrilegiously to couples who are remarried several times, living in mortal sin. We're not allowed to receive communion in mortal sin. St. Paul says, if I receive communion in mortal sin, I am guilty of murder. I am guilty of the body and blood of our Lord. Because it's a sacrilege. It's like taking the host. It would be less evil to take the host and throw it in the mud or give it to dogs. Because dogs don't sin. But mortal sin... To receive communion knowingly in mortal sin is a terrible sacrilege. And now they are, the Pope has officially allowed this. And then on top of that, on the document number 51 and 52, horrible, horrible, the, uh, how do I say this, there's little children, uh, the, uh, the official acceptance of perversion, of the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. And they say in that document that these people contribute to the good of the parish. Now you people are hunters. The, the, the contribution they make to the good of the parish is target practice for the <laughs> rifles. That's what same days used to do. Obviously, with such souls, you want to if you know any, you want to lead them to see they're living in, in, against God's law. They will go to hell if they live like this. And they ought to straighten out if they hope to save their soul. But to approve it, and to officially say it's okay, 
Do you realize how God punishes this sin, this vice? And we have two outstanding examples, Sodom and Gomorrah, which was a, a conger, it was about a metropolis of about ten cities together, completely melted with fire and brimstone. They found it today. The archaeologists have found Sodom and Gomorrah. The, the balls of brimstone are still there, melted onto the walls. The whole city was melting. Even the rocks were flaking off from the heat. And then um, Pompeii. Archaeologists digging up Pompeii in the 1700s. This was the city that St. Paul passed by, Her 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 Herculaneum and Pompeii. St. Paul perhaps walked through these cities. Perhaps it's one of those cities, or two of them, where our Lord said, if they will not hear you, wipe the dust off your feet. Perhaps these two cities did this to St. Paul. Because in the year 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius blew. It blew. And with the terrorizing thunder, unleashing a wall of ash and and blasted lava coming at a hundred miles an hour onto the town of Herculaneum. And all the bodies and bones that you can go today and see all the skeletons, and they find the, ske the heads are all cracked. Some of them have holes, because the brain boiled in the head and burst the skull. That's how they were so punished. And then Pompeii, which was five, about five miles from Herculaneum, by the, by the time the wall of ash hit it, it was not so hot. So the bodies are still, some of them are still uh, ashed. And you can still see the state of these bodies in fright and burning. And uh, Pompeii, when, in 1700s, when they were digging out Pompeii, archaeologists, they were scandalized by what they were finding. Open pornography. Open houses of vice, over 25 houses of prostitution. And then, of course, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. The graffiti was filthy. The people were scandalized. And the statues, which were foul. And you, so you can see Pompeii and Herculaneum were cities punished for the vices that Pope Francis and the cowardly modernist bishops have just permitted in the Catholic Church. And don't think that this synod is the worst thing to happen. The worst thing to happen was 50 years ago, called Vatican II. Because if you compromise on doctrine, if you compromise the faith given by our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Roman Catholic faith, if you are I compromise any truth of the faith, we deny the whole. And if you, if you compromise the faith, you will fall in morals as well. So 50 years ago, Vatican II compromised the Catholic faith, and now it's just logical that the Catholic Church, or the conciliar church rather, be just falling to pieces. Because God cannot bless the compromise against his, his holy Catholic faith. And it's being punished. The Catholic Church is being punished, as the Virgin Mary said, Rome will lose the faith and become the seed of the Antichrist. Now all of you know that for the past 42 years, Archbishop Lefebvre stood up with Bishop de Castromer, opposing this tidal wave of the destruction of the Catholic faith. And he opposed it standing on all the solid shoulders of the great popes of tradition, who condemned the modern errors that triumphed at Vatican II. They condemned religious liberty, the false ecumenism, collegiality, the false freedom of conscience, the idea that the state can be neutral on matters of religion, separation of church and state, and the uncrowning of Christ the King, which is what these heresies do. And Archbishop Lefebvre built his society on the shoulders of these popes, and he told the first four bishops of the Cisian Pius X, stay united in the faith, and do not make an agreement with Rome until Rome comes back to tradition. 
until Rome professes the Catholic faith of all time. Then, then there won't even be a problem, he said. You won't even need a reconciliation, he said, because the Pope will be Catholic. And he says, don't ever make an agreement with Rome until we have a perfectly Catholic Pope. That was the direction of the one who wrestled with the beast of modernism. He wrestled with it, and he saw these people are evil, these people are not honest, there is no discussion. And if Rome wants to discuss, he said, I will put it on the doctrinal level. Do you accept Pope Pius IX's syllabus of errors? Do you accept Pope Pius X's syllabus in condemnation of modernism? Do you accept Leo XIII's teaching on the church and state? Do you accept the social kingship of Christ of Pius XI and the anti-modernist oath and Pius XII and, and all the popes of tradition? And if you don't accept these, how can we discuss? There's no ground to discuss. If you don't have the faith, there's no discussion. And this, had, our, had Bishop Fillet stood on this, we would not be in the mess we're in now. And Bishop Fillet, the leader of the SSPX, he didn't listen to Archbishop Lefebvre. He didn't listen to the General Council of 2006 that reaffirmed that principle, don't make an agreement till Rome comes back to tradition. He didn't listen to the three bishops who warned him, don't go in this direction, it will cause confusion, loss of the faith, and loss of souls. And fourthly, he contradicted himself. Ten years ago, he, he was saying to Campos, don't make an agreement with Rome, it's going to be your downfall, it will be Operation Suicide. And now, all that has been overthrown. And this is the war we're in now. The devil is not, he, he's going to attack the last bastion of Catholic tradition. We knew it would happen, but none of us expected it this way, that it would be from the top. And it is happening from the top. And it is clear, the superiors of the Society of Isaac Denton want this agreement with Rome. They just met with these modernists about two weeks ago. Rome came out in its official press saying that the full reconciliation is coming. All they have to do is work out a few things. And it's just a matter of time. And you know what Archbishop Lefebvre called that? That's called, uh, that's called Operation Suicide. And he said, the greatest danger threatening our faithful. You see, he, he really was a good bishop. Because he worried about his flock. He worried about the souls. He says, the greatest danger threatening our faithful, and our priests, and our nuns, and our brothers, and all our families, and all our children in schools, is to put ourselves under these modernists in Rome, and the modernist bishops. And now recently Bishop Filet is encouraging, you can already see those pictures on the internet in France, the, the priests having friendly meetings with the local diocesan bishops. And the Bishop Filet is asking that all the priors do this. So don't be, some, be surprised someday if you see the Bishop of Syracuse coming to visit the Priory, sharing some cognacs and talking over golf, because it's all laying the ground for this false agreement, which is a betrayal to the Catholic faith, a betrayal to our founder, Archbishop of Feb, and to all the popes of tradition. And mind you, this bishop, as most of them throughout the world, in this diocese of Syracuse, this bishop has a church just for the perverts. I think it's called All Saints. What a shame. And we're going to shake hands and smile with this traitor to Jesus Christ? Instead of helping these souls save their souls, he's, he's paving their way to hell, patting them on the back. So, dear faithful, yes, it's time to wake up. Because we are in a new phase of the war. And all over the world, there are sons of Archbishop Lefebvre standing up in Brazil. Two monasteries, two whole monasteries. And in Asia, Father Chazal and Father Pico. And in, uh, in France, the great Dominican fathers. And um, they, have a, they have a handful of priests over there. And Father Pibert hopes to start a seminary. Uh, if he hasn't already. 
And here in the United States, Father Ringrose and Father Ortiz, and uh, we have the seminary just started to, last year in Boston, Kentucky. Why? Why, why all this? reaction and of the faithful rising up all over the world, demanding us to come, bring us the Mass, bring us the true doctrine. We don't want to go with Bishop Vallee to Rome. We don't want to go to modernist Rome because we will lose the faith. We don't want this new Mass. And you've got to realize Bishop Vallee has signed. It's very sad, but you've got to wake up. He has signed on to the compromise of the Holy Catholic Faith called the Doctrinal Declaration. This is a document by which Rome will make an agreement. Now, St. Peter's Society, they threw in, you know, ten silver coins and they got their agreement. And now their priests say both New Mass and Old Mass and they accept Vatican II. Campos Brazil, they chucked in 20 pieces of silver to get their agreement. They can still preach against modernism, they can still keep their Latin Mass, but now, 13 years after, they're saying the new Mass. And those very priests are giving communion in the hand and they got altar girls. They've lost it. And then La Baru, the great monastery in France. They, they, Don Gerard was warned by Archbishop Lefebvre, don't make an agreement with modernist Rome. It is a deception. And he didn't listen, and he chucked in his 25 pieces of silver. They could still keep the Latin Mass, and uh, the part of their deal was they could still uh, criticize Vatican II and only interpret it in the light of tradition, so they say. Now, Bishop Follet, in, in 2012, in this document still stands, it has never been rejected. It is the full 30 pieces of silver. It accepts the new Mass as legitimate, which Archbishop Lefebvre said is not legitimate, it's the bastard Mass. It is an illegitimate Mass, and it makes Catholics lose their faith. It accepts the Vatican II in the so-called light of tradition, once you, once you swallow that poison, you're gone. And look at La Baru. La Baru now has the new mass, and they defend religious liberty, a, her a heresy condemned by all the popes, because this heresy attacks Jesus Christ as God and King. That's why it's so serious. And that's why this fight is so serious, because it's Christ himself being attacked. And for Bishop Fillet to accept the new code of canon law, the new court of canon law, is, Archbishop Lefebvre said, it's unacceptable. It allows giving communion to non-Catholics. It inverts the ends of marriage. It brings democracy in the church. It, 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 it minimizes and washes down the clerical state, the hierarchy that Christ established in the church. And then he accepts the new profession of the faith that Archbishop Lefebvre also condemned, because it accepts Vatican II the errors, the heresies of Vatican II. And it also go, accepts the new sacraments, all of them of, of the new rite, as valid. And then it, worse, worse, the worst of it all is accepts Vatican II, excuse me, accepts religious liberty, one of the heresies of Vatican II, saying that it's, it is reconcilable with the Church's magisterium. All this, just to say, I know it sounds like a lot and all these documents, but it's very simple. It's not that complicated. You all know your catechism. You should. And you all know that you don't play with the catechism because the catechism teaches the, the doctrine that our Lord taught us. It's a, it's a bite-sized GPS to get to heaven. It's the map to get to heaven. It's, it's bite-sized. It's, it's easy to swallow. You can learn it, and anyone can study it. And every Catholic is bound to know the, at least the Catechism. You're not bound to be theologians, but you, you're certainly bound to know at least the Catechism. And if that Catechism is attacked, and changed, and compromised, you don't follow those who do that. And that's why this crisis in the Church is so grave, because it's 
Christ is God, Christ is King that is under fire. And the enemies of Christ want our Lord buried six foot under. They, won't, they don't want his name mentioned anywhere anymore. And they think they've won. They think they've prevailed. Because now they have a Pope who is just smashing what's left of the Catholic Church. And it's, it's terrible what we're witnessing. But it shouldn't be such a surprise because we were warned by many saints. Many prophecies spoke about our day. St. Nihilus spoke about there will be a day right before the great chastisement over the whole earth which will be more severe than the flood of Noah. Men will be wearing women's clothes. Women will be dressing like men, he said. Purity will not be known on the earth. Even little children will be ruined, lose their innocence at a young age. Now we see how, we can see how. And the prophecies, of course, of Our Lady of Fatima and Our Lady of La Salette. Rome will lose the faith, become the seat of the Antichrist. All of hell will be unleashed. The devils will roam the earth free. And they will destroy, try to destroy the Catholic Church. And St. Uh, Anne Catherine Emmerich, the Blessed, she says... I see a church being helped with the, being built with the help of the devils. And this church will spread, and it has no doctrines, and it destroys all morals. And they have a ceremony like the Catholic Mass, but our Lord isn't there. The new Mass. And she says, after all, there will maybe be a 200 priests left in the world that still have the faith, that still have the, the true Mass and the true doctrine. And so... These days we're in them, and especially with this last synod, it's very clear. Rome has really lost the faith. And the Archbishop said this way back in 88, 87. Rome has lost the faith. It is clear. It is clear. Rome has lost the faith, he says. He says it several times. And when, it, when the poison of Vatican II enters the SSPX, which it has now, where are all the priests to stand up? We were all trained to fight modernism. We were all trained to identify how modernists speak, how they act, how they work to destroy the faith and the catechism. All of us priests were trained. And where are they all? Where are they all? They should be speaking out against this betrayal to the faith. And when I talk to the priests, uh, well, it depends how you, you got to take it in its historical context. Well, you got to understand the nuances. You got to understand that Bishop Fillet didn't mean to do this. Yeah, but Bishop Fillet signed it. This is what it says, and it's pure modernism. Yeah, but you don't understand Bishop Fillet really meant this and that. But that's not what it says. And, and that is part of the modernist philosophical heresy of our days. People. Two plus two doesn't equal four anymore to people. When it says black is black, it, people believe in what's called non-contradiction. And that's a modernist tactic. As Pius X said, out of one mouth they'll say Catholic things, out of the same mouth they'll say heretical things and modernist things. And that's what we're living through. So, dear faithful, Faithful? Who are you faithful to? You're called Fidelis. When you're baptized, you're called Fidelis. Because when you were in your diapers, and maybe some of you as adults, you were asked by the priest, what, does the, what do you ask of the church? Of the Catholic Church. And you said to the mouth of your godparents, I ask for faith. The faith that comes from heaven the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and not from Buddha, not from Muhammad, not from the Jews, not from the Mormons and so on, but the true faith. And that's why you're called Fidelis, you're faithful. Faithful for what? For following Fidelis, following our Lord Jesus Christ, holding on to all he taught and trying to live his commandments. It's hard, we know, especially today, but trying at least. And that's why we're called faithful. And we are not faithful if we change the catechism. We are not faithful if we accept Vatican II in any way. We are not faithful if we accept the new Mass as legitimate. 
We are not faithful if we accept the new code, which attacks the Catholic faith at the very roots. We're not faithful if we compromise with the modernism. And that's why in this new phase of the war, you've got to buckle down. You've got to study again. Know your catechism. Know this crisis. And read Archbishop Lefebvre. Read the popes of tradition who condemn these errors of, the, of our time. Pius X's Fascendi. Pius IX's Syllabus of Errors. Pius XI on the social kingship of Christ. And Archbishop Lefebvre says this, because you're going to hear this a lot. You hear this a lot. It's all about the Mass. As long as I have the Mass, I'm happy. As long as we have the Latin Mass, we're okay. okay. No, you're not. It's not about just the Mass. Because, again, I refer back to the time in the Communists in Hungary. They had the Latin Mass. But the Catholic people will not go to the mass of priests who compromised with the communist government. But it was a Latin mass, what was wrong with going? Because the priests compromised the faith. And they would not go because of the danger to the faith. And that's, the, that's why the SSPX has always said, the old SSPX has always said, don't go to the mass of St. Peter's, don't go to the adult mass, because that atmosphere, as Archbishop Lefebvre said, will erode the faith. And you will lose it. Because the devil, he wants to rob you of the faith. Because once he robs you of the faith, you can't save your soul. He can, he can rob you of your purity. He can rob you of your honesty by stealing. He can make you lie or cheat once in a while. But when we repent, repentance, you still keep the faith. But if we lose the faith, without God, without faith, says St. Paul, it's impossible to please God. We cannot save our soul. And that's why we are, under, we are in the greatest attack in the history of the church, at the very level of the faith. So we must buckle down, know your catechism, know the faith. Read They Have Uncrowned Him by Archbishop Lefebvre. Read his, read his writings. Everything he says condemns what Bishop Fillet is doing now. And uh, let me just close with quoting the great athlete of heaven himself, the great champion of the faith himself, Archbishop Lefebvre. He's speaking here about Vatican II and how it destroyed the faith. After all these liberal ideas have infiltrated into the seminaries, the catechisms, and all the manifestations of the church, I am now being asked to align myself with these liberal ideas, come and make an agreement with modernist Rome. Because I have not aligned myself with these liberal ideas that would destroy the church, there are attempts to suppress my seminaries, and it is for this reason that I am asked to stop ordaining priests. And the Archbishop kept for being priests, because that's the last troops to sanctify souls and say Mass and forgive sins and preach the true doctrine. He continues, enormous pressure is being exerted on me to align myself and to accept this orientation of destruction of the church, a path which I cannot follow. I do not accept to be in contradiction with what the popes have asserted for 20 centuries. Both myself and those who support me obey all the popes who have preceded us, or we obey this present pope. At this time it was 1978, it was Pope John Paul II, I think it was, or Paul II. it was Pope John Paul II. And this, by the way, this interview was going to go out to all the Catholic papers in the U.S. in 1978, and the Catholic bishops in the United States forbade it to be published, and they threatened excommunication with any publisher who would publish this interview. And so the spotlight got a hold of it, and they published it uh, several times. If we do obey the present Pope, Paul VI, we then obey, disobey all the popes that have preceded us. Finally, we end up disobeying the Catholic faith and God. And then the question asks, so then, are you deliberately choosing to disobey this pope? Archbishop Lefebvre, it has been a soul-searching and painful choice, because events have really made it a choice of whom you disobey, rather than whom you obey. 
I am making this choice without doubt or hesitation. I have chosen to disobey the present Pope so that I could be in communion with the 262 previous Popes. And all the previous Popes condemned Paul VI's nonsense, John Paul II's nonsense, Pope Francis's nonsense, and Benedict XVI's nonsense, and Pope Francis's heresies. And all these Vatican II Popes stand condemned by the tradition of the Church. And once Bishop Fillet starts talking like this, accepting the Vatican II, the new Code of Canon Law, the new Mass is legitimate, the, the new profession of faith, he's gone. Pray for him. I hope he will reject all this before he dies, but you must pray for him. And pray for all the priests who are blindly, or weakly, or cowardly, or for whatever reason going along with this. And as priests, they should be barking loud like good dogs to protect the flock from the wolves. And that's our duty as priests. So, at least you, faithful Fidelis, you must hold fast. And the greatest treasure you have from the Blessed Mother is to have the Catholic faith. Because there is no other way to go to heaven. There is no other church Christ founded. There is no other door to go through. No other ladder or staircase to climb than the cross of, of the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ. So love Jesus Christ, who loves you. Oh, Father, you're getting sentimental now. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Yes, he does, actually. And you know what? We're not Protestants. We don't just talk about it and clap hands and sing about it. The living God, through the instrumentation of his poor priest, and any valid priest who defends the faith and keeps the true Mass, yeah, the living God comes down from heaven on the altar. The fire of the charity of God comes down on the altar, reuniting. Here you got a statue of the crucifix. In the Mass, the real thing becomes present. And you kneel down, we kneel down before Christ the King. That's the Mass. That's the beauty of the heart of Jesus, the eternal God, the eternal High Priest, the King of heaven and earth. And as he said, don't worry, my little flock. Don't worry, times will get tough. You'll, they'll put you out of the synagogue. They'll put you out of the churches. They will put you to death. And he says to St. Margaret Mary, I will reign in spite of my enemies. I will reign in spite of all that Satan opposes me and all that he raises up to oppose my work and my church. I will reign in spite of my enemies. So, God wants us to live in this time of war. And that's why the king, he doesn't just throw you some crumbs from heaven. He comes down himself. This is the beauty of the Mass. He feeds you his own body and blood. He gives you a blood transfusion of his precious blood to, to inflame your heart with the love of God and the knowledge of the faith. That's the love of our king. That's the love of the true God. That he really lays down his life for his friends and even his enemies. So let's go to the altar of God, to God who gives joy to our youth. Stay young of heart and uh, stay fresh for this battle like the Maccabees and carry on. Keep the daily rosary, wear Our Lady's scapular, do the first five uh, Friday, the first five Saturdays, five, five Saturdays and the first nine Fridays of the Sacred Heart and study got to know what's going on. You got to, like 50 years ago, 45 years ago, your, the grandparents and old people, you, they lived 50 years ago through that terrible Christ, Vatican II crisis. And they had to read and they had to study and see what was being said by the good bishops, Archbishop Lefebvre and the popes, to sort through it. And you got to do the same. And you got to pass down the faith to your children and to the next generation. Until, uh, until the great chastisement hits, and we know it will. So battle on. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee.